Welcome back to another walkthrough. Uh, we are looking at Word Chapter 13, uh, Newsletters and Research Papers. First thing we need to start is download our materials. Let's go ahead and go to our uh, Chapter 13 folder. And go ahead and click on our Word 13G Newsletter and News uh, Research Paper Homework. Go ahead and download your materials. Remember, do not hit this download all files. It downloads a zip file, which makes it a little bit harder to download uh, and submit later on. So go ahead and click on each one of these individually. Once you have them downloaded, once again, make sure you're using Google Chrome. If you're using Google Chrome, notice how all the files will come up down here at the bottom of our browser. Go ahead and click on the student file, the one with your name. Go ahead and make sure you hit enable editing. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll in a little bit so it makes it easier for you guys to see. And let's begin. So on step number two, where we're already at, uh, it wants us to click on page one at the beginning of the newsletter title. So let's go ahead and come up here. Let's click at the very top of our uh, newsletter. And it says from our downloaded files, we wanna insert uh, a microscope. So anytime we want to insert something, we will always go to our insert grouping. Remember we have our tabs up here at the top and we have our groupings underneath the tab. So we're going to go to our insert tab here under our insert tab, under our illustrations, we have pictures. We are going to use a picture that we downloaded from our files. So we're going to do this device. And we're going to go to our downloads under our downloads folder. There it is. There is our microscope. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and hit insert. And there it is. There is our little microscope. It wants us to change the height to 0.7. So notice that when we are clicked on this picture, we have our contextual tab. This tab does not usually show up unless there's additional functionality. In this particular case, more stuff that we can do to our picture. So we're going to come over here to our size grouping and we are going to change the height to 0.7 and hit enter. Doesn't change it too much, but it makes it a little bit bigger. It also wants us to recolor the picture. So right now this picture is uh, a black microscope we want to change it to a different color so i'm going to come up here to my adjust group under my color right here i'm going to click on color and under recolor i want to find the one that says blue recolor option in a light shade all right so let's see blue in a light shade well, there we go. This looks about right. I think this one right here, blue accent color one light. So it looks like it's the third row down, second column right here. And notice how it will change it from being black to blue. So you can recolor any picture you want uh, using the recolor tool. Make it match your document just a little bit better. Uh, it also wants to do a black text one picture border. So I'm going to come up here to my picture borders under my picture styles. And it wants me to do black text one right here, the second color. I'm going to click on that. Notice how it puts a little bit of a black border around it. But it also wants me to change the width to two and a quarter points. So I'm going to click on the picture border again and where it says weight. I'm going to change it to two and one quarters right here. And notice now I have a thicker line going around it. All right. So on step number three, it wants us to change the text wrapping uh, of the inserted image to square. Now we've kind of did this already in our previous uh, walkthrough. So make sure your picture is selected and notice that you have this little icon that pops up to the side. This is our layout options. We're going to click on it. And right here where it says with text wrapping, we're going to click on square right here. Notice that it will bring the text up around it. Uh, we also want to change the uh, location of our picture. So I'm going to come down here to 
see more under our layout options. It wants me to change the horizontal alignment to left relative to the margin. So change this to margin. And it wants my vertical alignment top relative to the margin. I'm going to change this to margin. And go ahead and hit OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to lock it in right there. So now it will not move. Step number four says starting with the paragraph that says new research on electronic health records. Select all of the text uh, to the end of the page. All right, so it wants me to select uh, new research. So I'm going to click hold and drag all the way down to the very end. It says do not include the section break. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to highlight this section break. I'm just going to highlight all the way down to that paragraph mark there. So once I've highlighted everything on page one from new research down to health information, it wants me to put in uh, two columns. Well, that's easy. I'm going to come up here to my layout tab right here. Under my layout tab, I'm going to click on under page setup grouping columns and I'm going to do two columns. And there it is. I have two columns starting to look kind of like a um, newsletter. Let's see. It wants me to format the text in the two columns and then apply to uh, justify. So I'm going to click on the home tab here. Under the home tab, under the paragraph grouping right here, there's this little icon right here that says justify. It's uh, next to the one that says uh, align, center, right, and it's called justify. And what that's going to do is when I click on it, notice that it puts a little bit of extra space in between each word to make it so the letters of the words are justified on both sides of the column. Notice how it goes all the way and fills both columns uh, all the way up. It's, uh makes it look a little bit more newsletter-ish. It also wants me to put a column break before the subheading of health, informa health, health privacy information. So right here in front of health information privacy, I'm going to click on that right in the beginning. I'm going to go back to my layout tab here. And it wants me to do a column break. So I'm going to click on my breaks. And I'm going to do a column break. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring health information, privacy, and security right up to the top of the second column. And now I have a little bit of blank space down here where we're going to end up putting a picture. It wants me to save the file. So I'm going to go ahead and save my file. So I'm just going to hit the save button. And we are done with step number four. All right, so step number five, it says start your web browser and then navigate to uh, this particular website. Well, my problem with this is it never works for me the way it should. So I'm not even going to worry about going to a web browser. I'm just going to put any old screenshot in here. So I want to go ahead, click at the end of patient right here. Make sure my cursor is at the end of patient right here. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my insert tab. And from my insert tab, I am going to click on screenshot. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick a screenshot. It doesn't make a difference what screenshot it is. I'm going to go ahead and just do a blank, uh, this right here, this uh, black box. I'm going to click on that and it's going to put that screenshot in for me. So anytime you want to put a screenshot in, I guess if you can't be using Google Chrome, you have to be using Microsoft Edge. Uh, but you go to your insert tab and you do a screenshot and it will put the picture in there for us. All right. So once we've inserted our screenshot, it wants us to apply a black text one picture border. Well, we've done that already we, under our picture format tab here under our picture border. I want to do a black text one. And it wants me to change the weight to one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on picture border again, change weight to one. 
and it wants me to set the height uh, to 1.55 inches. So I'm going to come over here to my height and I want to change it to 1.55 and hit enter. And there it is. It put a blank picture in there for me. So, so nice. So, so wonderful. Uh, sorry it did not work the way it should have, uh, but we will, uh, we'll go with this. It should still give us full credit for it. All right, so now moving on to step number six. It wants us to select the subheading new research on uh, electronic health records. So I'm going to scroll up here. I'm going to highlight new research on electronic health records. And it says using the font dialog box, apply bold and small caps. So I'm going to come up here to my home tab. Under my home tab, under my font grouping, I'm going to click on this little guy right here, which is my font dialog box. And it wants me to do small caps, put a check mark there. It wants me to do bold, so I'm going to click on bold there. It wants us to change the color to dark blue text too. So right here where it says font color, I'm going to hit the down arrow. I'm going to find dark blue text too, which is this font right here for me. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And notice that I now have this blue bolded uh, small caps uh, formatting. And it wants me to copy this for same formatting to the rest of the titles. So with it still selected, notice how I still have it selected. I'm going to come up here to my home tab under my clipboard grouping. I am going to double click on format painter, double click on it. And what happens when I double click on format painter, notice now my icon, it has a little paintbrush next to it. So I can come down here and I can highlight doctors define meaningful use. Notice that it will highlight that and it will change it to the exact same type of uh, formatting. Because I double clicked on it, notice how I still have that uh, paintbrush next to my cursor. If you only click on it once, it will only allow you to select this before turning off and you'll have to turn it back on again. So now I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna highlight health information, privacy and security. And then I'm going to come down here and highlight research source aids and EHR implementation. And that's it. I'm done. I need to turn it off. So I'm going to come up here where it says format painter. I need to click it once uh, to turn it off. It's no longer grayed. And notice that I no longer have my paintbrush next to my cursor. So that's a quick way to copy formatting uh, to different various parts of your paper. Uh, it wants me to select uh, Doctors Define Meaningful Use. Select this uh, title right here, Doctors Define Meaningful Use. It wants me to change the spacing before to 18 points. So I'm going to come up here to my paragraph grouping. I want to click on my paragraph dialog box. And I want to change my spacing before to 18 points. Spacing before 18 points, hit OK. And it's just going to add a little bit more space in between uh, this picture and my uh, title here. For step number seven, it wants me to select uh, the last paragraph of the newsletter. So I'm going to highlight this right here, this uh, ensuring the privacy and security all the way down to information. So I'm going to highlight this. And it wants me to change the text to bold italics. I'm going to go ahead and come up here, uh, make sure it says bold italics, which it already is. It wants me to apply a shadow border. So I'm going to come over here to my paragraph grouping and I'm going to find where it says borders and shading. I'm going to click the down arrow next to it and go all the way down here to borders and shading. It wants me to do a shadow border. So I'm going to go ahead and click on shadow right here. Make sure it says apply to paragraph right here. If it does not say apply to paragraph, make sure you change it to apply to paragraph. Make sure this is uh, highlighted and says shadow. It wants us to do uh, black text one, 
uh, let's see what is the point one point so right here I'm going to change the width to one and then it wants me to change the shading so I'm going to go ahead and click on shading right here and it's going to do a fill color and I want to do a dark blue text to lighter 80% so here's my dark uh, blue text to and I want to do lighter 80% which is the second one down right here it's this lighter color I'm going to go ahead and click on that and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and I want to center it so I'm going to come up here to my paragraph grouping and I want to hit the center button and I'm going to deselect it so you can see what it looks like it should look like this right here notice how it has the shadow border going around it and notice how it has a little bit of shading just makes it look really nice that's it for this page one I'm going to go ahead and scroll up here take a look at it not too bad we made this page look really good we made it a really nice looking newsletter except for this blank box but we won't talk about that so here is the actual research paper so this would be like any research paper that you would turn in for any of your uh, classes so it says for step number eight on page two below the newsletter change the line spacing for all the text uh, on the page to 2.0 so I'm going to highlight from Janet Eisler all the way down to outpatient care right here I'm going to highlight everything on page number two and it wants me to change the space or the uh, line spacing to two so whenever you do a research paper for almost any of your classes you will most likely need to have it double spaced uh, to do that you'll highlight it you'll come up to the home tab under your paragraph grouping here I'm gonna click on this little guy right here which is my paragraph settings dialog box and I want to change my line spacing to double and for the same text it wants me to change the spacing after to zero so notice how I have spacing after eight points I want that to be zero and go ahead and hit OK and notice now it will double space my entire document for me and when you turn in a research paper you should always double space it on page number two it wants us to apply a first line indent of 0.5 so all I need to do is click right here in front of there notice that my cursor is in front of there I'm just gonna hit the tab key and when I hit the tab key it's gonna give it a first line indent of 0.5 for step number 10 it says at the bottom of the page uh, it wants me to insert a footnote so when you write research papers oftentimes you'll need to put a footnote when you're trying to explain something in this case it wants me to put this if they had it so right here if they had it says Linder so right here after the period right there I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it so once my cursor right here after this period using it if they had it go ahead and zoom back out a little bit so once my cursor is there I'm going to come up here to my references tab under my references tab I want to click on insert footnote and notice that it will take me down to the bottom and it will put in my footnote here it is there's my footnote I need to type it in it says the EMR space open your parentheses electronic medical record close parentheses one space is the patient record created in hospitals and M U M U Tory environments. Can't can't spell to save my life. I can type, but can't spell. Uh, it wants me to do a semicolon space. It serves as a data source for other systems. And make sure you hit the period boom and make sure everything is spelled correctly because it will take points off if it's not spelled correctly so now after we've typed that in it wants us to modify the footnote text style so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to highlight this 
footnote right here. I'm going to highlight this footnote, including the one. Make sure you highlight everything, including that one. So highlight this entire footnote. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the footnote now that I've highlighted it. And I want to click on, I believe, style. I'm going to click on style. Yep, that's what I wanted. Click on style. So go ahead and right click on this after you've highlighted it and click on style. Once you've clicked on style, we're going to go ahead and click on modify right here. And under modify, it wants us to change the file, uh, the font size from 10 to 11. And it wants me to come down here to the format group right here, click on this format and hit paragraph. I want to change it to double spacing. I want to change the special to first line. So special first line, line spacing double. And that's it. I can go ahead and hit OK. I can go ahead and hit OK. And I can go ahead and hit apply. And now it will be double spaced and it will have an indent uh, down at the bottom. All right, so we've got our research paper. It's coming along quite nicely. Uh, for step number 12 is when we are going to get into the uh, nitty gritty of actually creating your uh, work cited. So for step number 12, it wants us to go to page two and it wants us to go to the end of the paragraph that begins with those clinical practices. So right here where it says those clinical practices, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put my cursor to the left of the period. So right here to the left of the period, right after lacking. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my first citation. So as you're doing your research paper and say, okay, I found this quote that I want to use. I want to go ahead and put in my citation and you're going to put your citation in right where you have your citation. So right at the end of the quote where you cited your work, you're going to put your cursor. You're going to come up to your references tab. You're going to come to your citations and bibliography. And you want to make sure whatever style your teacher is requiring is selected. For this particular example, we're going to do MLA. However, if you had a teacher that wanted you to do APA, you could click on APA. Uh, MLA, there's other different ones, but really APA and MLA are your two popular ones. So make sure MLA is selected here. And go ahead and click on Insert Citation. And I want to add a new source because I haven't used this source yet. And what's really nice is it's going to come up with my create source dialog box. And in this particular case, we are using a website. This is going to be a citation for a website. So my type of source, I'm going to change it from book, scroll down to find website. And it's going to give me all of the information that I would need to create a, an accurate citation for this, uh, for this record. So I'm going to type in my author, which is going to be uh, Gabrielle, comma, space, Barbara. Once again, can't spell. Barbara. Bar there we go. S space, A. So Gabrielle, comma, Barbara, space, Barbara, space, A. The name of the website was do EMRS make you a better doctor, comma, or uh, question mark. Uh, the year was 2008. The month was July. That's when it was created. The day was the 15th. We accessed it and we put it in here in uh, 2016. I guess they didn't update that from the last time we did this uh, greater project. Uh, June was the month that we accessed it. Uh, the day was the 30th and the medium is web. So it tells you exactly what information you need uh, for this citation. And we've just typed it all in. Go ahead and hit OK. And notice that it will put my citation in here for me. It will put it in uh, parentheses for me. So I don't have to do anything else. I've put my citation in uh, and I'm good to go. 
So now I want to go down to page three. Uh, on page three, it looks like I used a book. Uh, it says at the end of the paragraph that begins uh, further research, wants me to put my cursor to the left of the period in between clinician and period. Uh, it wants me to insert another citation. So once I'm clicked there, I'm going to come back up to my insert citation. Notice that it does give me the option to use my other citation that I already created. So if you use a citation or a source in more than one spot, instead of having to type it in yourself, uh, you can just come up here and click on that citation. It'll put it in for us. But in this case, we want to do another new source. I'm going to add a new source. This time it is a book. So make sure I select book, not book section. So the author is going to be uh, Devore, comma, space, Amy. The title of the book is The Electronic Health Record. Or the Physician's Office. And I don't know how to spell physician, so need to copy that pretty nicely. Office. Space, or comma, space, and it's the first edition, so 1E. The year that this book was printed was 2010. The city was Maryland Heights. The publisher that uh, published the book is Saunders. And the medium is print. So that is, that's all the information that I needed. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Notice how it puts the citation in for me. However, when you have a book citation, you always have to include the page number. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this citation. Notice when I click on it, I get this down arrow next to it. I'm going to click on that down arrow. I'm going to hit edit citation. And it's going to allow me to add a page. In this particular case, I want to add the page 253 and hit OK. And there it is. Now I have uh, my citation, the book, and the page number it's on. So now it says on step number 15, it wants me to go to the references tab, which I'm there, references tab. It wants me to open up researcher. Uh, so under research right here, it wants me to click on researcher. It brings up my researcher sidebar here. It wants me to uh, search for, so I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna hit quotation marks, electronic health, records and then close my quotation marks so it wants me to search electronic health records in quotation marks once i've typed that in i want to hit enter and it says under top sources it wants me to click journals and notice the extensive number of journal articles on this topic and notice that it's doing a search for me and it's looking up uh, information on this topic. It allows you to uh, do research right here in your, uh, your research paper. All right, so now it wants me to go ahead and uh, close out of this pane. So it just wanted me to show that to you. That's pretty neat. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this pane. Oh, it says on page one of the research paper. Here it is there's often a discrepancy. In the fourth line, select electronic health records. So let's see here in the fourth line, one, two, three, four. Uh, oh, here it is, electronic health records. It wants me to highlight electronic health records. And it wants me to apply the yellow uh, text highlight color. So I'm gonna go to my home tab here. Under my home tab, under my font group, I'm gonna click on the text highlight color and it's already selected yellow for me. So I'm just gonna click on it once and notice how it will highlight it yellow for me. All right, step number 16, it wants us to go to page three. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to page three. Here it is, it's a blank page, there's nothing on it. It wants me to put my uh, insertion point uh, next to the paragraph. So I'm gonna put my insertion point right here next to this paragraph. And it wants me to, on the References tab, so I'm going to come up here to my References tab. Under my References tab, under my Citations and Bibliography, it wants me to click on Bibliography. 
and click on works cited so right here works cited i'm going to click on this and notice when i do that it puts in a properly formatted uh works cited page for me uh, i don't have to type it in myself i don't have to worry about too many spaces it puts it in there for me it does want me to select the paragraph that says works cited right here it wants me to open up my paragraph dialog box. I'm going to go to my home tab under font group. I'm going to click on my paragraph. Oh, that's a font one. I want to click on the paragraph one right here. This little guy it wants me to change my spacing before to zero points. And wants to make sure that it's uh, zero points after it wants my line spacing set to double. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and it wants me to center uh, my work cited. So it wants me to center this right here. So that's it. Uh, that's how you put in your works cited. If you want to uh, very easily put in a works cited page, cite your sources throughout your paper, and at the end you hit one button and it will put it in for us. And it looks pretty good. And it looks like we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the top of my document. I'm going to hit the save button. I'm going to hit a save for again for good measure. I'm going to minimize this. And I'll come back to my downloading starting materials. I'm going to choose my file. Once again, should be under your downloads folder. And there it is. I'm going to click on it, hit open, upload, and submit for grading. And I'll go ahead and close out of this. Now coming back here, I want to see how well I did. I'm going to click on my three dots. I'm going to hit view submissions. And it looks like I got a 97%. I guess I'm not even perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and click on submission one. And I'm going to scroll down to see what I did wrong. It says uh, it looks like I did something wrong with my shadow border. So I'm going to hit the down arrow there. Uh, it says the bottom border color was not set uh, per instructions. I don't know why it wasn't correct, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to scroll down, take a look at my other thing that I missed. Looks like I missed something on one of my citations. I most likely misspelled Gabriel uh, Barbara because I'm a terrible speller. You can fix that if you need to. And I'm going to click on this one, and it said that my uh, source type, the author was not set to Devore Amy. Once again, probably misspelled it because I'm terrible at spelling. Uh, so I missed only three points. I'm happy with that. Uh, feel free if you want to go back and fix them. Uh, if you made these same mistakes, if not, you can submit it. 97 is a good grade. Uh, I will start working on our walkthrough for next, uh, next week. It will be an Excel walkthrough. And like always... Have a wonderful day.